Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome to Film Time with Fava, brought to you by Fired Up Network. I'm your host, Anthony Fava. Now let's get right in to episode three. So before we begin with today's topic of discussion, I want to say I watched uh, movie 99 on the IMDb list of top 100 movies. This week was Citizen Kane. Now I had seen this movie once before in a first year film course. And honestly, at the time, I found it pretty boring and I almost fell asleep, which is surprising because it's supposed to be one of the greatest movies ever made. But I went in with an open mind and honestly, the second time viewing, it was pretty good. I see why it is regarded as such a great movie. For the time, it was amazing. Director Orson Welles did an awesome job with it. It really just follows the story of a guy who started out with nothing, was given an opportunity to have wealth and make something out of his life. And he used that to not just get himself forward, but help others. And that's a really great story to hear. And it was expertly shot. One scene in particular I loved was where he is just starting out in the newspaper industry and he's looking at this other newspaper's Uh, There's a picture of all their founders and investors and businessmen. And he's saying how, oh, like they have so much reach with all these guys. And then the next scene is him taking a picture with all of them because now they joined his newspaper and he's just making bank. So besides that, the movie is just really good. Highly recommend watching it. If you haven't seen Citizen Kane, it's a real must watch. But yeah, that was number 99 on the list. I thought I would have been able to watch more by now, but I've been pretty busy with this show and with work and everything. So I'm going to try and watch a few more movies on that list before next week's episode. But now let's get into our topic for today. And that is going to be my top 10 animated movies. Last week, we did just top 10 movies overall. But this week, I want to focus on animated because as you may know, next week, Pixar's Luca is coming out. I forget the specific date. It might even be tomorrow that it's coming out, uh, as in Friday, if you're watching this on Friday. Well, I guess if you're watching this Friday, that would be today. Sure. Anyways, so yeah, Pixar's Luca is coming out soon, and that is the Italian Pixar movie, the one I've been waiting for. Speaking of Italy, we're rocking the Italian jersey today in honor of their win over Switzerland yesterday, securing a spot in the round of 16. We're coming for the Euro Cup victory this year. Team Italy, the pasta eaters, let's go. But anyways, yeah, Pixar's Luca is coming out soon. The Italy-based Pixar animated movie, which I am very excited for. I like the uh, angle they're taking of people from the sea coming onto land. Almost a modern-day Italian little mermaid, except with guys instead of a a mermaid. Um, But yeah, with that... Let's begin my top 10 animated movies. And as with last week, we are going to start with our honorable mentions. So we have five of those. And the first honorable mention is Chicken Run. Now, this movie is great. It's a stop motion claymation animated movie about uh, it's actually based on originally on the movie The Great Escape, which is a World War II film about people tunneling under their prisoner of war camp, POW camp to escape and get into the, I believe it's the Swiss Alps they're trying to get to. But yeah, this takes that story and revolves it around chickens trying to escape their farm where they will either be slaughtered, well, eventually slaughtered, but for now they're just getting their eggs collected. So one day a new chicken comes. He's like this circus chicken that flies out of a can. He basically leads them to believe that he can allow them to fly out of there. And the whole movie is just about them planning their escape of this farm. And it's just it's just a fun movie. It doesn't quite crack my top 10, but I respect it enough to put in my honorable mentions. Uh, the next honorable mention is a fun movie that me and my sister watch all the time, and that is Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. Now, this movie, by all means, in terms of cinema, it's not great. It's a Scooby-Doo movie. What do you expect? But when I say that this movie is the best Scooby-Doo movie, related property of all time that's right i'm saying even better than the original series i'm not lying this movie is so fun to watch the soundtrack the song terror time again if you haven't listened to that look up terror time again from scooby-doo zombie island you will not be disappointed um so yeah just great scooby-doo movie great overall fun movie to watch don't be afraid to let your inner kid out by watching that one and In the third spot, we have what's technically an anime movie, but I'm going to be including 
there's another anime movie that I'll show up later, but I'm going to be including anime on this list of animated movies because I think they're similar enough. Um, so yeah, my third honorable mention is Lupin the Third and the Castle of Cagliostro. And um, this movie was actually Miyazaki's, how Miyazaki's first animated feature length movie. And I gave it a watch, I think just about a year ago one night because it just came on to Netflix. And I didn't even know at the time that it was his first animated feature film. But um, after watching it, it was great. It was a nice little James Bond-esque adventure, except the main guy is a criminal, not a secret agent, which is a nice um, change on the classic formula. Some of the scenes are great. There's one scene where he's doing some magic trick where he's pulling out flags from his hands and his sleeves and stuff. Just overall, really good story, really great animated movie. Doesn't quite crack my top 10, but in terms of Miyazaki movies that I've seen, it, it's right up there. Now, this fourth spot may disappoint some people. Some people may be flaming me in the comments, but I'm putting The Lion King as an honorable mention. I'm sorry, guys. I respect The Lion King as a great animated movie. Amazing story. But at the end of the day, I didn't watch The Lion King a lot growing up, so it doesn't have that place in my heart of like my all-time greats. Because there's Disney animated movies that I will always watch before The Lion King. And just besides that, the story, it's it's been done before. It's based on Hamlet. And also there's been some conspiracies that they actually copied it from an anime, a Japanese thing called Kimba the White Lion. The similarities are endless. The uh, evil stepdad, stepdad, uncle has a scar in that too, so... The soundtrack, though, with Elton John, very good. But sadly, as good as The Lion King is, and this is the original Lion King, not the new one. The new one, we're not touching that. Um, the new one, I mean, yeah, the original Lion King, great movie, great soundtrack. Not enough emotional value for, for me to put it in my top 10, but it will get an honorable mention from me. And my final honorable mention is from one of my favorite shows, Dragon Ball, and it is the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, which came out, I believe, in 2018. 2018 or 2019. But I've been a fan of Dragon Ball since I can remember, and this movie was insane. Um, in terms of story, there's, there's not like a huge story. They go back into the past of the Saiyan race which is what the protagonist Goku is a part of and they tell a bit more about that but just the if you know Dragon Ball you know the action's always top tier and this doesn't disappoint you get to see all the great fights all the action you want and the ending sets up potentially a new Dragon Ball series which I am very excited about so Dragon Ball Super Broly rounds out our honorable mention so now let's get to the top 10 my cream of the crop of animated movies. Um, so at number 10, we have The Fox and the Hound from 1981. Now, this is an older Disney movie, but if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend this. This movie makes me cry every time I watch it. It's just this heartwarming story of two animals that aren't supposed to be friends that form this this great bond, but then as the world tells them they can't be friends, they start to question that bond, but then in the end, the bond remains, even if they can't see each other anymore. They know that they have a friend out there. And yeah, this movie makes me cry like a little baby every time. It's so good. The The voice acting, I believe Kurt Russell plays Copper. Copper? No, Copper's the dog. He plays Todd the Fox, which is my favorite character because the uh, the grandma's always like, oh, Todd. Yeah, don't quote that. But yeah, no, The Fox and the Hound is an excellent animated movie and very significant for me. I've watched it so many times, and that is why The Fox and the Hound comes in at number 10. Now, at number nine, we have a movie that I was very skeptical about when it was announced, and that is The Lego Movie, starring Chris Pratt, directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Now, when I heard that a Lego movie was coming out, I was ready for the most gimmicky thing of all time. Oh, and besides Chris Pratt, I forgot, it stars Will Ferrell as the villain. Like, that's insane. 
Will Ferrell's one of my favorite comedic actors, if not my favorite. But yeah, the Lego movie, I thought it was going to be this big gimmicky thing just to sell Legos, but they actually put so much care into this movie. Like, the, the stop motion of the Legos was insane. The story was awesome. Oh, Morgan Freeman makes an appearance in this, I forgot, as uh, the wizard guy. Vitruvius, that's the name. Oh my god, like, it's funny from start to finish. It gives a good lesson that you can be your own person. You don't have to conform to society. On it, yeah. It, the real message of this movie is just to be yourself no matter what other people think. Obviously, like, don't be doing dumb stuff, but yeah, like, just be your own person. That's the message that this movie puts across, and that's a great message to be giving to the youth that this movie is aimed at. But even if you're not young, even if you're, you could watch this at age 90 and still have a laugh and have a good time with it, is basically what I'm saying. And that is why the Lego movie comes in at number nine. Now, number eight. We have a classic Pixar movie, and that is, of course, not these guys, but The Incredibles. Now, if you don't know, The Incredibles is about a superhero family. Seems like it's loosely based on the Fantastic Four with some of their powers that they have, but um, yeah, no, The Incredibles is an excellent movie. It takes the superhero genre and puts it in an era where Basically, superheroes are outlawed and have to come back. And it's a great redemption story of an, I wouldn't say an older superhero, but a guy who misses the good old days and knows that what he did to cause the downfall of the superheroes isn't what's going to define him. Now, that's a very like methodical way of putting what The Incredibles is and what it is is just an amazingly fun movie to watch. The villain in this movie, Syndrome, he's great because he shows that like you don't need powers to make things happen and mess stuff up. That's basically what he shows. But then it comes back to bite him in the end. Spoiler alert. Yeah, and obviously, as we all know, that was one of the finest cartoon ladies of all time, Mrs. Incredible. Bruh. I, I like real women. Um... Okay, so after The Incredibles, number seven, we have Coraline from 2009, directed by Henry Selleck. Now, I hadn't seen Coraline until this past year, but I had heard great things. I had seen some creepy images from the book that it's based on, and honestly, I'm so glad I watched this movie. It's the perfect combination of creepy, adventure, mystery, thriller, and just a fun time. The animation style is awesome. Um, I believe it's stop motion, I want to say. I could be wrong on that, but yeah, the the animation style really allows for the creepy factor, especially with the main antagonist of the film, who is the fake mother to Coraline, because when we see her transform to the monster she becomes at the end, it is so creepy seeing her spidery blade frame just crawling down this hall after Coraline, and yeah, the main message of this movie, I'd say, is just, like, it always gets better in a way, because she thinks her life is so bad, and she wants this perfect life, but then realizes that what she really wanted was at home the whole time, and I think that's something a lot of people, you know, can figure out, like, maybe life isn't so bad. I don't know if that's a good message, but that's what I kind of got from it, but yeah, besides that, the, the voice acting awesome uh seeing the stark contrast of the more down and monotone portrayals of them of Coraline's mother and father in her real world versus when she goes through the crawl space in her room yeah the range on that was great and that will then bring us to number six which is one of my favorite Disney animated movies a lot of these are gonna be Disney guys um but yeah, up next, we have Tarzan from 1999, directed by Kevin Lima and Chris Buck. Now, this story, just this movie just makes you want to hug your mom, honestly, Aww. just seeing Tarzan dropped off this wreck flaming wreckage of a boat, floats off into the jungle, is taken care of by... Actually, I'm getting that wrong. He floats to the jungle, and his parents are mauled by a tiger, um, and then he gets taken in by gorillas 
and they raise him as their own. And he all that's all he knows. He knows he looks different than everyone else, but he doesn't know why. And then that is all turned upside down when other humans come to the island, Jane and the gang. And um, yeah, it's a great love story of sort of the beast versus the damsel in distress. Although I wouldn't say Jane is the damsel in distress, but yeah, no, this movie is great. Seeing Tarzan grow up with the gorillas and seeing the bond he forms with all the animals and how he's just one of them, it shows that your family doesn't have to be related to you. Your family is the people that you feel loved by. And even if you look different than your family, they're still your family regardless. And that's a great message. Um, Oh, one thing I'm leaving out, the soundtrack of Tarzan is insane. Phil Collins, one of my favorite singers of all time, had no business going this hard on the Tarzan soundtrack. If you haven't listened to the Tarzan movie soundtrack, you are doing yourself a disservice. That is my public service announcement for today is that everyone goes and listens to this Tarzan movie soundtrack. You'll be in my heart. Um, Son of Man, Strangers Like Me, Two Worlds, One Family. All those bangers after bangers on that album. And yeah, the movie, pristine. Uh, Number five, we have a movie that I'm guessing a lot of my viewers around my age and younger around my age have seen, and that is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie from 2004. I don't know if you guys knew this one was coming, but it's directed by Steven Hillenburg, rest in peace to the creator of SpongeBob, and Mark Osborne. Now, this movie took everything from the SpongeBob series and just amped it up to an 11. This movie is insane. The story is amazing. I'll never forget when Plankton says, oh, I've done plans A through Y, and then Karen's like, what about Z? And then he does plan Z, and it messes everything up for the gang. But yeah, and at the end of the day, it's a great hero's journey. We see SpongeBob and Patrick go from two guys who were so unconfident in themselves, thought they were so weak. They, they become men in the middle, but it's false because they thought they became men. But by the end of the journey, even without their seaweed mustaches that they had at the beginning, they realize it doesn't take those seaweed mustaches to grow as a person. And they grew as people, or I guess sea creatures, by the end of the movie. And also the cameo by David Hasselhoff when he shoots them down with his pecs. I don't have as big pecs as David Hasselhoff yet. <laughs> But um, yeah, that amazing cameo. What else we got here? Oh my, I'm forgetting the greatest part of that movie. Um, the Goofy Goober Rock song. I'm a Goofy Goober. <laughs> that song is incredible. It's actually on my workout playlist. It really gets me going in the when I'm grinding in the garage. Yeah, and that is why <laughs> the SpongeBob SquarePants movie from 2004 comes in at number five. Now, at number four, we have a movie that I mentioned in my top 10 movies. In my, I think I mentioned it in my honorable mentions, but that is WALL-E from 2008, directed by Andrew Stanton, and that is my favorite Pixar movie. I mentioned that also in the honorable mentions of last week's episode, but this movie is amazing. You see WALL-E, who's been alone for all these years on a forgotten earth, just picking up trash, collecting things, playing with his cockroach buddy. You see him fall in love. Now, mind you, he falls in love with the first robot that he sees in years, but it's just a really beautiful love story to watch with those two and seeing the the overall message that of protecting our Earth because we see how bad it gets and how humanity literally lives like a bunch of lazy slobs in this space station just floating around in chairs and letting the machines it's the machines that overtake them but then at the end you know they really come back Wally gets the girl great movie I mentioned the shot with Wally and Eva flying through space and Wally just using that fire extinguisher to go around those shots are incredible um this is a must watch not just for Pixar fans but for movie fans in general um, I'll definitely be watching this many more times in the future because it is just that good. And that is why Wally is at number four. And number three, we have yet another Disney movie. And this is my favorite animated Disney movie. 
which means that the top two aren't Disney? Is this a fake video? Nah. Um, number three, we have my favorite animated Disney movie, 1998. We got Mulan. That is my favorite Disney movie. Always has been, probably always will be. Um, just the story's awesome. You know, this girl protecting her family, going in place of her father to fight in the war against the Huns, uh, despite what gender norms say. She's not even supposed to be there. Um, it supplies one of the greatest musical numbers of all time. Be a man, you must be swift as a coursing river. You know the rest. That song is tier, S tier. That's what I'm like, we're S tier song right there. And the fact that they left it out of the new Mulan, don't even watch that movie now that I think about it. Yeah, just for leaving that song out, let alone that apparently it's not very good. I haven't actually seen the new Mulan, I refuse to. Um, but the original Mulan, just seeing her journey from this girl who was seen as different by her whole village to saving China from the Huns and getting the emperor's like sword. Oh, like when the emperor gives her the head Hun guy's sword at the end, it's just great bookend to that story. There is a sequel to this. You can watch it, but it doesn't even come close to the original, but yeah. The original Mulan from 1998 is so good, and that is why we have it at number three. Now, number two is a movie I mentioned in my top movies last week, and that is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from 2018. Now, I thought about putting this at number one, but I just couldn't put it above the movie I did put there, but that shouldn't take anything away from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse because this is the second best animated movie I've seen. It's so good. It follows the story of Miles Morales, obviously, the um, African-American, Hispanic Spider-Man that is from the Ultimate Spider-Man comic books who takes Peter Parker's place after his death. R.I.P. to the GOAT. Um... But it's really just a story of finding who you are, um, going against expectations that have been brought before you, both in terms of being Spider-Man and just his life in general from like expectations his parents gave him. Yeah, and it, 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 where do I even, the voice acting is amazing. Uh, Miles' voice actor is awesome. Peter B. Parker is amazing. That's basically the Peter Parker that trains Miles. Um, I mentioned this in the last video. John Mulaney is Spider-Ham. Incredible. The comedic timing is insane. Um, Spider-Man Noir, played by Nicolas Cage, one of my favorite, jokingly favorite actors. Oh, not the bees! Not the bees! My eyes! Yeah, it's a classic Nick Cage line. What's another classic Nick Cage line? Um, oh, yeah. This is what my roommate does all the time. I'm going to take his face off. Yeah, so that's my uh, Nicolas Cage impressions for the episode. Uh, Haley Steinfeld is Spider-Gwen, also a great addition. And yeah, I know the post credit scene in this movie where the, 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 they do the pointing Spider-Man meme. He's like, ah, oh, you're pointing. Oh, you are pointing first. Uh. And then these cops are like, who was pointing? <laughs> who was the real? Uh, yeah. Anyways, the movie's great. <laughs> the, I mentioned the animation style in the last video. It has these like choppy frame rates that uh, get smoother as the movie goes on to show Miles growing as a character. And also just looks like you're watching like a 3D comic book come to life, which is incredible. And that is why Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse comes in at number two. I'm looking forward to the sequel. Will it top the original? That is to be seen. And at number one, if you watched the top 10 favorite movies episode, you could probably expect this because this was the highest rated of my animated movies on that list. And that is why at number one, we have The Prince of Egypt from 1998. Now, this movie is incredible. As I said in the last video, I was raised Catholic. So I had heard the Moses story before, but never really paid attention to this uh, amount in terms of the Exodus story. 
But watching this movie, I saw a video where they were reacting to it and they just loved it. So I figured, you know, I'll give it another try. I'd seen it before when I was very young, but hadn't remembered much. And I can say that this movie... Did it change my life? It changed my life in terms of film because I didn't really know how well stories from the Bible could be portrayed through animation or just in general on the screen until I watched this movie. Even if you're not Catholic or religious or anything, this is just an amazing story of a guy who frees his people from the clutches of an evil empire run by his brother? Well, I guess stepbrother. What are you doing, stepbro? Anyways, um, uh, yeah. So he frees the the Jewish slaves from Egypt from the Pharaoh, and yeah, it's just a really good story of warring factions and what expectations of someone can do in terms of making someone evil. Because we see that with the character of Ramses when the pharaoh basically tells him you're the weak link and you're gonna break this chain of the mighty dynasty and he's like if you don't smarten up egypt's going going down and ramses really takes that to heart and is like 10 times crueler than his father was i mean he didn't feed the babies to crocodiles like his father did but he basically tried to wipe them wipe out all the uh jewish people from egypt and it, yeah it just shows what the expectations of one's paternal figures can do to one's psyche and in the case of Moses it shows how you can what perspective can do to you because at first he is living this luxurious life as the pharaoh's son in Egypt but then he learns that he wasn't born Egyptian he was born from the slaves and this totally changes his perspective and we see that his first time seeing his people being worked to death and his he now sees these as his people rather than his slaves and that just starts his hero's journey of freeing them with the help of God. Yeah, whether you believe in God or not, this movie is incredible. The shots, I mentioned the parting the Red Sea shot from the ending of the movie. I mentioned that in my last video. That shot is one of the greatest animated things I have ever seen in my life. The music in this is incredible. When you believe, when you believe. Winnie Houston, Mariah Carey did a great cover of that. If you haven't listened to that, do it. Uh, Deliver Us is the best song in this movie. It's so good. So good. That's that's an understatement. I, deli- I listened to Deliver Us in the shower. That's how good it is. It takes a lot to get on my shower playlist. Um, yeah, and besides that, the cast, Val Kilmer as Moses, Ray Fiennes as Ramses, Sandra Bullock as Moses' sister, Jeff Goldblum as Aaron, his brother. We got... Patrick Stewart as the Pharaoh, Michelle Pfeiffer as the Pharaoh's wife. Yeah, I'm definitely missing some, but like the cast in this movie is actually insane. And that is why The Prince of Egypt is my favorite animated movie. And that brings us to the end of this list. So yeah, for that, just let me know what you think down below. Let me know on social media. I didn't mention it yet. Instagram at Favalicious. Twitter at A underscore Fav 24. Let me know what you think about this video. And uh, let me know what you think about my picks. Let me know what your lists are for your top animated movies or just any movies in general. Uh, Let me know any animated movies you think I should watch because there are some that I haven't seen that I really probably should. Um, Yeah, so in terms of next week's episode, as I mentioned earlier, we will be reviewing the new Pixar movie Luca. Uh, I'm very excited for that. I have high hopes for this movie, not just because I'm Italian and that's where the movie's based, but I have very high hopes for Luca. The animation style looks really cool. Um, The story looks intriguing to say the least and i'm really looking forward to watching that and reviewing it and who knows maybe i'll i'll let you know if the movie cracks the top 10 or if any of these movies are getting dethroned i don't think uh i think the top four movies on this list are not going to be getting dethroned but from wally from spongebob movie up there's some there's some room for a potential new heavy hitter and that could be luca who knows um but yeah besides that 
that brings us to the end of this episode. So I will see you guys next week. I'm Anthony Fava, and just remember, guys, this is as real as it gets.